A gambler playing roulette places a $1 bet on the number 23. If the ball lands on the number he has chosen, he will receive a $35 profit on his bet. Otherwise, he forfeits his bet. If he plays the game many times, what will be his average win or loss per spin? This average, we are meaning the word the mean, and it's a mean about a discrete probability distribution. Uh, the mean, or sometimes it's also called the expected value. The expected value of, of what's going on here, of the scenario. And it's discrete because we call it discrete because it has definite uh, set outcomes or, or stepped outcomes. You can think of a discrete uh, variable, so 1, 2, 3, 4, or this one is uh, negative 1 because he would lose the, do the dollar or positive 35. So it doesn't just have to be just two choices like we have here. We just have negative $1 if he loses and positive 35 if he wins. Um, but discrete just means uh, set choices, like a, a die is a discrete uh, outcome, either the number one or the two, where as, as opposed to continuous, where it would be um, like a, a height, where you can keep breaking it down to a quarter of an inch and an eighth of an inch and just keep on cutting it down uh, further and further. Okay, the scenario, this roulette wheel, I'll draw that in, in blue because a roulette wheel is none of the spaces are blue typically they're black and red and green and they have numbers all around here and they've got they've got red numbers and they've got black numbers and I should just have two green because they have two green spaces so in the end they have numbers 1 through 36 and they also have the number 0 and the number double zero so a total of 38 numbers on the roulette wheel. So we, we remember that, we'll come back to that. And the way we set up these expected value problems, or the, the average or the mean of a discrete probability distribution, is to set up a table. And right away, let me just tell you what we're aiming for. We are going for this. The mean of a discrete probability distribution equals the sum, this is the summation sign, this is capital sigma, of x times the probability of x, where x is the outcome, any of the possible outcomes, and the prob p of x is the probability of that specific outcome. So that's what we're going for. We're going to be uh, building that. So in the table, let's build a table here. And we have our possible x values, the probability of that x, and then we'll do x times the probability of that value. So if the gambler wins, if the gambler wins, he gets a profit, a positive $35. If he loses, he gets a, he loses $1. So that's negative $1. The probability, the probability of winning in roulette is just one number. He only picked one number. It's the number 23. So he just has one possibility out of the possible 38 numbers. That's his probability of winning. His probability of losing then is the other 37. If it lands anywhere else, he loses. So 37 out of 38 times he will lose. But he wins pretty, pretty much. He wins $35 if he wins, which is why that bet seems attractive to gamblers. But let's find out what happens. We multiply. Uh, x times p of x, because we're going to find this formula, and 35 times 1 over 38. So 35 over 38 is the product of those two, and negative 1 times 37 over 38 is negative 37 over 38. And then we want to sum those, as we see here, and the, the sum of those is negative 2 over 38. So the mean, I'm going to move it over here, the mean is approximately equal to, if I take this fraction and turn it into a decimal, that's a negative number, negative 
It's a losing bet. So he might win sometimes. He'll lose the majority of the times, and he might win big sometimes, but over many times, the average is negative. Negative, negative, negative is the average, the expected, val uh, the expected value. So the moral of the story, the house always wins. Gambling is a losing proposition. I know some people think it's exciting, but in the end, the house always wins. And we use this uh, mean of the discrete probability distribution to find out why.